Hi there. So I want to go through a little more about how to get Asterisk and a Cisco 8945 working on Raspberry Pi. So I've changed the network around from the first video where I had a flat LAN network on 10.1.1.1. Now I have Asterisk running on a Raspberry Pi, which is downstairs. And this is kind of a complicated setup because the Cisco phone requires a uh, a wire and here's the wire it requires an ethernet cable and I don't have ethernet upstairs but I still want to work on this project so what I did was this I set the Mac the Mac computer I set the Mac computer to have internet sharing on, and internet sharing is on the Wi-Fi here. So the Wi-Fi connection is going to internet sharing. Internet sharing will give me a, a NATed DHCP address. So I know that then when I use internet sharing, I can reach any addresses on my homeland from here, but yet this Cisco phone is behind a NAT. So behind the NAT on the Cisco phone, I simply put in all the usual suspects in here for addresses. Let's go through them, what happened this time. So let's go through the network again. Network setup. IP4. So this thing gave me a NAT with DHCP. When I had DHCP turned on, it gave me 192.168.2.3. That came from the internet sharing on the Mac. It gave me that address from its DHCP. So I said fine, and I turned off DHCP, and I said I'll just, I'll just keep that address on this private LAN that's NATed off of the Mac sharing. Default router is the Mac which I suppose the Mac is now 2.1 DNS server 2.1 the only real change I made here is I now have a Raspberry Pi running downstairs in the house and it's running on 192.168.1.58 and the Raspberry Pi now has asterisk on it and it has the um, TFTP server so let's um, let's go through how that works here I want to get out of this menu on the phone. Actually, we'll just turn the phone off since I'm going to demo how to redo it. Turn the phone off, pull the power out, the phone's off. There we go. Anyway, so with that said, the power, or I'm sorry, the Ethernet for the phone is coming out, the Mac computer, and uh, that's how that works. So, here with Internet sharing turned on, we have a a NATed address. Now, I have all these login windows logged into the Raspberry Pi downstairs. This window here is actually from the, um, it's the instance that's connected to the daemon of Asterisk downstairs. And I have SIP debugging turned on. This is the TFTP server part of the Raspberry Pi that will report on on TFTP uh, logs. So you might ask, how do I get a TFTP server to work on Raspberry Pi? Well, you install TFTP DHPA, and then you put all of your telephone files into uh, an area on your on your Raspberry Pi. I put all my all my files into um, slash uh, serve on the Pi, and uh, well, let's see, CD slash SRV, here we go, we'll do the LS on that. So I've been experimenting here, but I keep everything that is working right now in TFTP. So now in here, I have a bunch of files I'm running SIP 
9-4, which is working for this Cisco 8945. And you can see that I've experimented a lot trying to make this thing work. You just need one of these files, and my phone ends in 587. So this is the file here that finally is working to make this thing go. And what else is in here? This has been like experimentation over years, but I started working with this thing over the summer of 2017, and I didn't really get it working until today ever, which is unbelievable. And I had to use Asterisk to make it work. I, I kept thinking that you could put a client into these phones. So in the 8945, you can't put SIP clients in them. They have to connect a call manager or an Asterisk. The phone must do that. There's no other way it's going to work. Okay, so that's about that. Um, when the phone boots, it'll boot off the TFTP server. Let's also understand how to configure the TFTP server on the Raspberry Pi. You want to enable debugging on it. So all the, all the Raspberry Pi TFTP HPA stuff is in uh, CD to ETC. And then go to defaults. There's default. And all the stuff for configuring your um, TFTPD is in TFTPD HPA. Let's take a look at that. Sorry about the slow typing with one hand. Okay, let's take a look at this file here and uh, see what's in there. So in there I have, um, that's interesting. So I have the name of the thing, the directory I've changed to be slash serve TFTP. Um, and that's good. The address of my uh, TFTP box is is this address now this is critical this thing comes with 0.0.0.0, .0, .0. you have to change that to your actual ip address that's in your interfaces on your uh, raspberry pi and that gets it running why i don't know but that, that makes it work okay under options secure yes and i i put in this v4 i found on the web somewhere the vvv is for the um watching the files come out on the um, syslog, you want to be able to enable debugging to watch the, lo the files come out, the phone grabs. Run as daemon, yes. So that was enough to get TFTP running. And then you want to do a service, a command called service space TFTPD dash HPA space start. And that will start your TFTP. You can then run some files through it from a different computer and make sure it's serving. So that took a little while. And so with that said, we can now look at this log, which is a log of the syslog. And if I do a control C here to get out of it, um, control C, and then do a command recall, just doing a tail on syslog, and that will show are entries from TFTPD daemon. So let me put the phone away for a second, use two hands. And I would like to turn the phone on now. And hopefully the phone is in the view. I'm just gonna plug the power plug back into it. If I can find it. Okay, here goes the power plug. So, Yes, now the power plug is back into the phone. And the phone is booting up now. It's booting up from the uh, TFTP boot server on the Raspberry Pi downstairs. And again, we're going in through a Mac. So we're using the IP, or I'm sorry, the Ethernet port on the Mac. Using the Mac's um, sharing. So we'll go here to the gear and we'll go here to sharing. If I could find it, there it is. So this is how we're getting the Ethernet to share 
uh, the Mac on the Wi-Fi, which you can see we're using the Wi-Fi here, Ethernet and Wi-Fi. Okay, so the Cisco phone is booting up. The 8945 is booting now. Once it starts getting a turning indicator where it's grabbing some files, you'll see some activity on the uh, TFTP server. So anyway, there's Asterisk running. Here's our TFTP server. There's nothing going on yet. Let's give it a minute and see what happens. Okay, the phone now is probably going to start grabbing files. When it does that, it's grabbing files. So when it grabs files, it grabs files fast. There's TFTP. It should just start spitting through files here. It's saying phone not registered. Okay, there. I just grabbed a bunch of files. And it seems like it does it twice before it registers, which is weird, but it'll do this twice. And then the white light will come on. Okay, now what's going on? Um, Asterisk now has, I think, accepted the phone. Right there it says peer Cisco 1 is now reachable. So that's good. That means the phone registered and I'm using this thing again on a NAT connection on Mac. So it's not so copacetic. I don't have any dial plans in here working yet. Nothing. But if I click the uh, switch hook now, you'll see that I get the phone to come up. And I can try and make a call. Just hit the number, and nothing's going on. What's kind of cool is all the logs kind of perk up when I play with the phone. You'll see this thing kind of uh, logging my activity. Hit a number. It'll it'll log that, or it was. No, I was seeing it spinning up some activity here. Let's see, will this do anything? Oh yeah, so that's pretty cool. Hang up. Press a number. It's not spitting anything out. I have a thing in SIP debug mode. So I thought I would get a little more out of it. Here's the log on syslog from master. Press a button. The username is Garon or something. Okay. So I hit a four. Extension four doesn't exist. But what about six? Anyway, you can see it's responding. This is how to do it on a Raspberry Pi using a MacBook and using internet sharing. All right, well, gonna hang it up for now. And I appreciate your kind attention to this video, and I hope it helps you with your Cisco 8945 and Asterisk. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.